Hello there, folks, and welcome back to Thames FC after back-to-back -back draws. We can fire straight into today. Uh, I've mentioned it earlier. If you missed the earlier episode, spoiler, the results are on the screen. But by all means, go back and watch them. There's some good hard-fought draws in there. And uh, today, then, South End and Hull coming up for you. There is a Shrewsbury game in between, but we're not going to focus on that one today as uh, more important things are at hand. Top of the table, South End play Thames in a battle for top spot. The winner, depending on what Chesterfield do, will likely go to the top of the table. And then, of course, our second, I say second, leg it's the replay against Hull City in the FA Cup and uh, after the South End game we'll find out who that potentially could be against in the fifth round of the FA Cup the first time we'll ever be there before so then let's take a look at today's team and run you through it before we play up against Southampton play up against Southampton South End Southampton South End it's south it's great we're going south which is weird because South End is actually on the east of the southeast and it's a team so selection-wise, we have a bit of a problem. Three or four injuries to the squad and a suspension. Martin Welsh will miss out on this game. will be available for the later one, but will miss out on a key league fixture, which means that Wolfenden is going to have to move across to that left-hand side. Actually, do we have reserves that we could bring in for this? Oh, we've got George Conter, but I don't think we can risk him in this. So this is the lineup for the game and lots of injuries on the horizon for us. Hell on the horizon, they're already here. Uh, Ramsey and Wilkinson both out and unavailable. That's two defenders down. Holness is also injured, so he can't play today either. He's out for seven to days with a concussion. And then Martin Welsh uh, is suspended for this one. We'll be back for the later game against Hull, which means Colette's going to have to come in at right back. He's not a natural right back. He's not a good right back. He's not a right back. Uh, we're going to put him in a more defensive role for this as he prefers it. It might make us slightly less offensive going forward, but we don't really have much of a choice. Uh, Fitzpatrick will be in goal then. Murray Gardner in the centre-back positions, Wolfenden out on the left, Smith to play in behind Holmes and McDonald, Burgess to play behind Oates and Alan Rodgers, and I mean, we've got three players scoring over 20 goals, you don't see that all too often, so let's see then, can they get the goals today, we need them big time. And this first game against Southend is, uh, well, this could be this could be tense. I'm hopeful though, yes I am, how far far today, take this music and use it, let it... Okay, team talk's gone quite well, and uh, if we just, just make that go in a little bit, we're at home, so we should have the advantage, you would think, the home advantage against Southend, as uh, the games get underway then. Big, big game here, this is going to really, this is going to show us if we're sort of title contenders, or playoff pretenders, I guess we're going to find out right now as uh, Altadal races forward, and look at the pace of Altadal, wow, what a start to his game, he keeps going forward, Altadal, oh, what a individual run i mean you as well as me probably thought he was going to pass that and had to pass it but no not this man he finishes it off what a run from him picks it up in the, in the deeper area of the pitch and races forward beats one there's only one more to beat as he gets into the penalty area a little bit lucky from that deflection but the finish is superb he's back people he's not scored for a few games that's what we like to see from him one nil thames in the biggest game of our league season so far Smith puts a ball into the centre, and this could fall to us. Well, ordinarily, when the ball goes in like that, you do wonder if you're going to get a penalty for a push or something. Not this time. The ball is going to be recycled, and we come again. Pat Rogers out on that left-hand side uses the help of Colette back into Holmes, and here we go. Is there going to be a, a cross put in? There is. Altadel's there. The target man, Pat Rogers. Pat. Oh, it should have, could have and should have been a goal, viewers. Oh, what a chance. What a huge chance. We've got a corner played in. Looks like it's not going to come to anything. Rogers goes towards the byline. He finds McDonald. I'm not expecting too much, but you never know. Burgess is there. God, you know, when he gets it, you, you think there could be, well be a goal. 65% possession in these early stages. We are certainly dominating the play at the Riverbank, and it's going to be whether South End, who have obviously had a pretty good year to be where they are, can, uh, can fight back. I think Chesterfield may be drawing their game currently with South End losing. That would put us top of the table by two points, all on 33 games now. After this, there'll be 13 more to go and we're definitely in the hunt but that three horse race for those automatic places is uh, is hotting up as this could be a chance for South End as it's headed down if it's Patrick saves of course we don't keep clean sheets so we definitely need to score again McDonald now into Burgess and could there be a chance for Thames at the end of this first half Burgess moves it forward McDonald finds Patty Rogers who goes back to Holmes and you can see the triangle working magic and the ball sort of magically gravitated towards the goalkeeper how 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 Ball put forward. It could be South End with a chance before the half time mark. And Young's forced a little bit wider. He finds Lewis Pugh. Back to McDonald, who shoots and scores. And South End, just at the end of the first half, get their goal. They're back on level terms. And it's Robbie McDonald with it. We're, we go to sleep a little bit at the back. Down that right hand side as well. Our, our, down our right hand side, of course. We are slightly weaker today. And a uh, nice flick from that player. Played inside. McDonald strikes home. And as I say, we do, we do generally concede. On the halftime mark, then 1 1. And uh, a pretty even game. We're definitely dominating possession, but the score sheet is what matters. 
I guess they've been the better team here. That seems to have motivated a few of them. I'm going to say no more. I'm going to just get them get out there and do the business. You can see that point, though. Chesterfield seem to be winning their game. They're the team that are benefiting most from this. So, um, yeah, goals. goals. Points mean prizes, I hope, viewers. And goals mean, goals mean leads. 33 games gone this season. We've scored 94 goals. Uh, but that's obviously not the issue this season. I just saw the 94 and sort of winced a little bit. as Fitzpatrick with a very good save. 94. Look at it there. 94 goals. 94. We're 33 games in. That is a bit ridiculous. And we're not even top of the league. We've, oh, no. All right, 15 minutes to go, and I'm going to make a change. Pat Rogers is going to come off. Ben Cousins is going to come on. And Stevie Foster in the centre for McDonnell. And we'll just see, can those two boys make the impact? 15 minutes to go. I might make another switch in the middle as well. I think we might get Smith off. The five minutes to go. Keon Harris is going to make way. Oh, sorry, Smith is going to make way for Keon Harris. Five minutes. Will there be a la last bit of drama in this match? No. No, there won't be. As time, this is three one ones in a row. Time comes to an end. Time comes to an end. Time's continuous, Ben. Time does not come to the end. Uh, but a one one, which means I think Chesterfield. It, it, that's what it was before. I'm pleased with the result, though. You got to say South End. A bomber's in the league table. We'll take the, the the point again. Much like the Chesterfield game, can't afford to lose it. It doesn't really matter what happens. It matters more about us beating Shrewsbury, uh, which we are going to sort of skip over a little bit. And then, of course, we've got the whole game coming up after that. But before that, we've got the fourth round draw coming up. And uh, oh, actually, Chesterfield dropped points, did they? they yeah, they did. They drew a 91st minute goal from Oxford. They love they love goals, don't they, Oxford? Yep, scored five against me. Fantastic. But quickly, let's see then the draw. I said, uh, yeah, well done, Gardner. No, good defensive work. We only conceded one. All right, the FA Cup fifth round draw coming up. And uh, this is obviously who will play should we beat Hull, which it's not. I mean, it's, we're not the favourites, but. Are we the favourites? Played them twice this year. Haven't haven't lost to them, so maybe. Okay, then. Who will we face off against? We're first out, and it's a home tie, which... I don't know. If we're, to, if we're to get it, I'm not that happy about it. And we'll play Crystal Palace or Newcastle United. So, a big team either way. Uh, some of the other results go through. Lots of oars once again. We've had this last time we did the draw. Most of the big boys are still there. Tottenham, Chelsea, City, uh, Arsenal, Manchester United, Liverpool. They're all in there still, as you'd probably expect. Uh, so, yeah, Crystal Palace or Newcastle. Not too bad. Right, I have to fly forward now uh, to the game against Tull. If, there's, if anything funny happens in the Shrewsbury game, I'll show you it. But, uh, yeah, the second game to come up will be Hull. Uh, half time in the Shrewsbury game. Nil nil. We've had about four brilliant chances. I haven't taken any of them. Ah, there we go. McDonald makes it one nil, and we lead against Shrewsbury at long last. Seven and a half chances, two clear cuts, and we finally get a goal. Ah, oh, Pat Rogers. It's a rout. It's it's two nil against Shrewsbury, which I'm just pleased. Did we lose five two last time we played them? We have everyone playing above a seven in this match, and I'm just not going to make any changes. I'm just going to let them win, and it's going to be nice. And uh, another goal. I mean, he's offside, but we're playing well. This is the perfect tune up game before the whole game that's coming up. Well, there goes the clean sheet. 2 1. I'm going to go defensive. And there we go. Full time. 2 1 Thames. Still can't keep clean sheets. It's just not happening. <laughs> okay, with that one in the books and a win on the board, it's on to Hull for a chance to play either Crystal Palace or Newcastle. The dream tie. Okay, then. time for Hull and some big decisions to be made. Uh, we, we don't keep clean sheets, so whatever. Essentially, my situation is that Martin Welsh and Hullness are both back and available, so they're both going to come back in, which means that Kellett's going to step out and uh, Wolfenden's going to go back over to that right-back spot that he prefers if you put him on the automatic duty. Some people don't like that I play full-backs on the automatic. It's just been something I've always done, really, so uh, I stick with it for now. Um, the bench is looking strong. I think we're, we're decent there, and of course, the, the line-up now yeah, is, is what you're used to. So here here we go then. Can we get the job done away at the KCOM Stadium? Let's find out. I'm excited because this, this is just, in a way, the league is quite stressful now, but this is quite fun. I think the fear is though that at any point against the side like Hull, I could just be battered. Like in terms of ability, their, their team is just better. I think the way we play though is causing teams problems, the better te teams especially. They don't expect us to, to control it and keep it as this could be one of the, that could have been one of the worst starts possible with 10 seconds gone. It's a free kick for Hull, and they've got it on the edge of the box. This could be danger. Well, they shoot well wide. Well, keep, keep doing that. question is, can we control the game away from home against Hull? We do, we've done it before. The question is, can we do it again? And our first highlight isn't actually our first highlight. It's going to be a turnover in possession and Hull. Unless we win it back, are going to start breaking down this line. And Finlayson uh, is doing a pretty good job at it. He's got a man in the middle if he can find him. Fitzpatrick with a save. 
well, I mean, it's gone down as a clear-cut chance. It definitely was. I'm a little bit nervous. It's like it's like excited nervous, though, rather than real nervous nervous. They've got a man down. We could kick it out, but we're not. Pat Rogers from distance just shoots over. That's a bit harsh. Owen Finlandson's going to have to go off injured, though. I think I have to bring on Bradbury at the back. At the back at right wing, sorry. At our back, I guess it is. It's, uh, the, that throw-in's not the best work they'll ever do. And we're quite deep here, so we're going to have to work it out and figure out where we're going to go with it as it plays into Smith and Burgess. And here we go. We've got runners, of course, in Otadale, but... Burgess, I I'm not really sure what's happened, and Robinson has to come deep to get involved as well, and now it's Hull's turn to maybe do something, and we're sucked in there, which we don't really need to do. It's not a risk worth taking, as Robinson's at the po at the front post. Saved again by Fitzpatrick. It would be it'd be so us to have a clean sheet against Hull. We do have more possession, though. We are controlling it half an hour gone, but it's Hull that bring it forward again. Wells on this left-hand side, ball played in, and penalty it better be a penalty well that clean sheet we spoke about is under threat here as Bradbury the substitute scores the penalty and Hull take a 1-0 lead Jack Bradbury gets it I want to see it I don't care about the fact I want it. what what for all right so it says the cross comes in something happens in the middle <sighs> that Robinson falls over yeah yeah uh, whatever okay and now things get a little bit tricky I'll tell you what though there's a chance here if you can have this before the half-time whistle. This would be a great time to score. Burgess, referee! It's a penalty! Wow, we've got one back. And it'll be Patty Rogers to take it, as he, as he ordinarily does. Pat Rogers! Of course. Of course, game. Literally nothing I can do. All right, half-time then. We are 1-0 down. And, ah, the circumstances are annoying, aren't they? My lucky boys, things haven't gone right so far. They look rega relaxed. They uh, look confident. Come on, come on. I'm going to make a really subtle change, which might seem a bit odd. But I'm going to switch Alterdale and Pat Rogers around. I'm also going to do the same thing in midfield. I'm just going to see if that makes any difference. They can all play like those sides. I'm just interested. Chance for us at the start of this half, though, as Burgess tries to find Pat Rogers. Referee, anything? Oh, it's a it's a free kick their way. For a second there, I thought Pat Rogers had been fouled. He's on a six rating right now, is Patty Boy. He's, he's down to a 5.9. Missing that penalty has knocked his confidence. Ben Cousins, of course, can come on and do a pretty good job if required as well. Ball played in. If Hull score again, we've got a real issue on our hands as they go close. I am I don't think I'm going to wait on it. I think we're going to bring on... Well, do we go to, do we go to two big men? I've never done that. That would be bold. Let's do it. Let's go two, ta two target men up front and try and cause them all sorts of problems. And let's go... This is... this. Oh, no. It's the, so, it's the least tempting Thames things ever. But we're going to go a little bit more direct with the passing too. A creative play so far. It's not getting as many chances, so we're going to go a little bit bolder, I think. I've got a throw in very deep in our own half, and to get this out of there, well, this is what, we, this is what we're looking for. A direct ball up to tipping, but we've lost out, though, and now Robinson plays in. Bradbury scored the penalty. Ah, oh, I've gone away from my philosophy a little bit because we weren't really having an impact on the game, but that's a real shame. We'll go attacking as well. It's just that pass there. It's just there's three players, and it just doesn't connect, and... The ball forward, we're well, we're two 0 down. That penalty. If we score that, I think it's a, I think it's a very different game. And you've got to remember as well, that's our only shot on target is that penalty. So not our best work. We're gonna to have to change things again, I think. Steve Foster's gonna come in in the centre and uh, we'll make him a little bit more attacking. Maybe put him out on this side. Change Holmes up to a deep line playmaker. It's just ah, uh, it's one of those things because we've had good results against him in the past. I just felt like we could have had an edge, but it's not paid off at all and um, this is one of our strongest lineups as well so it's really disappointing to go out of the FA Cup with a bit of a whimper really there's some possession for us late on there's two minutes to go I mean if we're going to get back in this we probably have to score right now as Wolfenden so Otadal Burgess shot Foster well, Stevie Foster with a goal in the FA Cup fourth round I can get on board but it's too little too late isn't it and there we have it, over at the KCOM. 2-1 defeat to Hull. Not the worst thing ever, of course. That's not a Premier League side. We've got to give ourselves a bit of credit. Can't fault your effort, though. But we are out of the FA Cup. The, the dream for a League One side is over. But to be fair, we did pretty well to get to this point, I think. And uh, now, our full focus is on the league. And speaking of that, then, the next time we shall meet, let's look at some uh, some playoff teams who are in there that we could potentially play. Gillingham, Notts County, Wigan, all fighting for it. So I think uh, Gillingham and Wigan is quite a, quite a good game to bring you next. So that's what we'll do then, and I'll see you for it. If you're looking forward to it, do leave a like. If you want to see some more, subscribe to the channel. There's a promotion chance here, and I hope you'll join me to see if it happens. Goodbye. Things are hotting up. Thank you for watching, as always. Thank you to the support on Patreon, and for everyone that's bought a T-shirt, thank you so much. The amount of Altadar ones we've sold is outrageous.